Hi, my name is Adam, and welcome to today's video on using repeats to do data-driven testing. So, in a previous video in this playlist, we created a web test that would log into this application here, this library information system, and it logged in and created a book, put in the information, and then verify the book was created, and then logged out. So just to recap before we get started, uh, when we recorded the test, it created three window names in the object tree and each of the windows that it interacted with, all of the objects that we've seen, the links, the uh, buttons, the text boxes, the drop downs, all of those are represented right here. And if you go into the RVL on the toolbar, this is our test scenario. So these are the steps we, we are carrying out during testing. Uh, so just to prove that it works, we're gonna click on the play button and we're gonna play it back through Firefox. So let's go ahead and hit the play button, and this will play it back one time. So it logs in, logs in with the username librarian, the password, password, and it goes in and it's going to create a book. And it's going to create the same book, Tale of Two Cities. Fantastic. Now, let's suppose you wanted to log in and try logging in with different usernames and passwords, because that's what computers can do. They can do the same test over and over again with different test data. So let's get rid of these extra rows we put in that commented, just delete those. So how do you do that? Well, there's several different ways, but the simplest thing is just to use what's called a map. Now you can also, as well as we're gonna do a map, which is where you have a set of data, there are other tools we could use. We could also get the data from a database, from a SQL Server database or Oracle database, we could also get it from a web service using our web service functionality. We could also get it from a flat file. We could also get it from a spreadsheet as well. So there are several different options, file, spreadsheet, for getting the test data or a web service. But the simplest thing is to use what's called a map. So we'll do insert row, insert row. And if you remember that everything we've done so far has been what's called an action or an assert or a verification point, in the flow section, you've got some other options too. You can do conditions, you can do loops, you can do branching, and you can do mapping. So first we'll create the map. And a map is basically a grid of data. Just for convenience, I'm putting this in the same spreadsheet as the main test where all the steps are. You could also create a different sheet over here and have the test data in one sheet and all the different steps in another sheet. It's really up to you. Uh, so we give the map a name. We're going to call it Logins and Passwords. And we're going to have the different headings. We'll have a login and we'll have a password. And that's all we need. You can also create things for like the book name, the author name, all that stuff as well. And we're going to create three. We're going to do this three times. Insert. We're going to first log in with Librarian, Librarian, which we know works. We're going to log in the second time with Borrower borrow which is the second login we have and the third one we have is admin and we'll put bad password so we're going to want to test a couple of different things we're first of all testing can we log in we're also testing if we do log in can we access all the features and uh, we'll be testing both those things here so that's how you create the data well the question is then how do we associate these steps and how do we loop multiple times. So you choose what you want to loop over. Now we want to loop over the entire test. If you want to loop over just a section, you could do that too. You could just say, I want to loop over this section here, just as easy, but I'm going to loop over all of it. So I will select the whole set. And then you go right click and you go wrap selection in loop. And you choose the loop type. It's not a variable. It's actually a pre-built map. You choose the name of the map, which is logins and passwords. And then you can simply replace these hard-coded string values with variables from the map. So I'm replacing the login and password with the map value. I also need to verify that the actual result on the page has changed. So I also want to check that when I log in and I verify what the login name is displayed in the top right on the page, that it actually is the map value, not this hard-coded value. So I must also change that as well, not just where I set the text, but where I verify the text. Sometimes I forget that. And this message here will make a bit more generic. We'll, we'll, instead of saying the verify the text, we'll say verify that the login name is correct. We could also put the text in from the map, but that's sufficient. And that's it. Hit save. And we're going to hit play. Now, before we hit the play button, one thing we should bear in mind is what happens if something doesn't work? Do we want to keep going or do we want to stop on first failure? So you can change that by going to test settings. And you can look in here 
and you can say stop on error or you can say keep going. Well, we want to try all three even if one fails. So we'll say stop on error, false. And that's it. Make sure we've got the browser ready. Make sure the application is ready. And we'll hit play. And it's now going to play, hopefully, three times. So let's see, it's going to log in. Log in as librarian, it's going to create a book. It's going to put the name of the book in, the genre. It's going to insert. Log out. Now it tries again, with the same with borrower. That login is correct. Goes to create a book. Ah, but there's no create book link. Borrowers that can't actually create books. Only librarians can. And so it's going to stop and fail. Now, had I told it to fail on first failure, it would have stopped right away. However, because I told it to keep going, because I want to see what's going to happen, it's going to try all the subsequent steps in the test until it gets the one that's going to work. And the one that's going to work will be the logout, but nothing else is going to work because there is no book. So it will take a little bit longer this way because it tries about five times to do each operation and has a delay between them. So that's why it's important to understand that setting. If you want to stop right away, which is good when you're first creating a test, make sure you set that to true. If you want to try all the different data combinations like I'm doing, then set it to false and it will keep going. Um, so that's an important thing to bear in mind. So we'll just wait a minute for it to finish its cycle. There you go. Now it logged in. And this time it's going to try and log in as admin and bad password. So this time it fails even earlier. It fails right here. And similarly, it isn't going to fail right away because it's not been told to do that. Instead, it is going to try and log in. It's going to try and create a book. It's going to try and do all the things. And you see it tried to create a book, but we're not even logged in at this point. So it is going to fail. So we're going to, we're going to wait a minute or two longer. Uh, and while it's doing that, uh, it's also going to capture the screenshots that it's, it's recording during the playback. So when we want to diagnose, you know, why did this not work? Obviously, we're watching it in real time so we can see what happened. But it's often very hard to diagnose after the fact. That's why we have the screenshot capture. Because when you go through the screenshots, it'll become readily apparent that the create book link is actually not on the page. And when we try to log in with the admin and bad password, we got a red error message instead of the login link on the top right. So that's an opportunity where having the screenshot capture turned on is really helpful. So it's playing it back. Wait for it to finish. Once it finishes, you'll know because the screen will come back to rupees with the, uh, the, the greens and reds displayed. Oh, there we go. Perfect. And you can see here, there's the test failure. So first of all, it started off well. It went through the first cycle. I'm going to go slowly through here. It passed. True. And then it got to the section where it couldn't find that create new book link. And so it marks it as red. And we also give you information because sometimes the test doesn't fail because the application is broken. It fails because maybe the server is too slow. The object, the, object, the link might have been there, but it takes too long. So we repeat, we'll give you some suggestions how to improve your test if your test is flaky. In this case, though, that wasn't the case. It actually was not on the screen. And if you look here, you can see there's the screenshot. And you look, and if you expand it out, you'll see the, the link is clearly missing. Similarly, if we scroll down further, to the second cycle. There we go here, bad password. And you can see what happened is when we get to the login page, instead of it showing the next page with the word librarian or admin in the top right, we have the red message right here where you can see the you didn't log in correctly. And again, if you want to see it blown up a bit more detail, you can go to the screen flow, click on that, and now you get the screen flow with the full size screens. And you can watch what happened. There you go. No, first time it works. Second time, no link right here. That's it. Object not found. Go down a bit further. Admin fails to log in, and there's the red message. It's great. So it makes diagnose really easy. So that's how you use Rapiz to do a test-driven data to test. We created the test. We created a set of data. We associated the test with the data, told it to loop over multiple times, 
turned on screen capture, turned on the option to continue even when there's an error. And now we've been able to test all three logins and passwords and see how well they perform. So thanks for watching today's video on data-driven testing. Look forward to seeing you in the next Rupees video.